today i will discuss the topic understanding globalization alternative perspectives and technological dimensions so there are three aspect of the topic first understanding globalization as such and then the various perspectives of the globalization and thirdly what are the different technological dimensions towards globalization so let's begin by understanding what is the meaning of globalization the term itself means that it relates to the global activities i mean it is as against the uh, localization which used to be when the world was confined uh, to the villages and the people were uh, you know uh, using the local resources to satisfy their needs but with the advancement of the scientific inventions and the technology the global resources are being utilized to take advantage of the technology to minimize the cost and for optimization of the resources so therefore globalization implies interconnection of all the various human activities whether it relates to the economic activities or the political activities or the social activities happening around the world so there are three dimensions to the globalization the political dimension the social dimensions and the economic dimensions so basically if we look at the definition of the term globalization it uh, is compression of the world and intensification of consciousness of the world as a whole it also implies the integration of the human activities particularly if you look at the economic activities the free movement of goods services capital and the technologies across the world from one nation to another nation so globalization in that context is enabling the optimum use of the resources it uh, also helps to specialize in what a country produces in the best possible manner at the least amount of the use of the resources so this is what the economics uh, define the human behavior of optimizing the limited economic resources to satisfy the human wants now when we uh, look into the depth of the issue then we find that globalization in the earlier period was more intensive and more integrated than what we see today although prima facie everybody says that the globalization is moving fast now but it is moving fast with the help of technology but with lot of restrictions in earlier time there were no restrictions about the movement of goods about the movement of the people there were no visa restrictions there were no tariff barriers so whether it were goods it could move from one country to another without any kind of tariff or non tariff barrier there was no regulation as such which we find today from the world trade organizations which uh, deal with various rules of trade we find various regulations about the movement of the human being through various kinds of restrictions 
uh, by the local uh, national government through visa. So without permission of the other country, you cannot move. Then we need to look at what are the various phases of globalization. So broadly, there are three phases of globalization. Now the difference between various phases is the first phase was restricted uh, only through the mercantilism where the, uh, you know, the movement of goods or the services or the uh, capital was very, very uh, restricted because uh, till that time the inventions for the aeroplane or the steam engines, etc., had not taken place, but people used to move with their cargo through ship from one place to another. And with that, various companies, like, uh, you know, the companies from Portugal, Dutch, and the East India Company, etc., they were the main pioneer to give a boost to the first phase of globalization. And then, uh, in the second phase, from 1800 onward, it was the British East India Company which, you know, uh, started uh, globalization in a more uh, deeper fashion uh, by colonialism. So the first two phases of the globalization was uh, broadly uh, as in the form of colonialism. And uh, the, sec the third phase, basically, uh, after the Second World War, those uh, uh, things were, you know, uh, through various kind of institutions. So whether it was a case of political integration or the social integration or the economic integration, we find that United Nations was uh, formed in the year 1945 and various political issues were dealt with through the United Nations and various other uh, uh, institutions, the intergovernmental institutions were set up for, you know, dealing with the various political issues around the world. Now what we find that in the sec third phase or in the present phase of the globalization, we, some countries, they have taken advantage and they are benefited by the process of globalization. And there are certain countries which have, you know, not only that they have uh, not benefited, but rather they are put to a disadvantage. Now why? Because the institutionalization through the Bretton Woods system had been designed in such a manner that the globalization would work more for the benefit of certain countries only. And the result is visible now when we find that the globalization has led to wide range of disparity between the developed country and the developing countries. And this is visible through the World Inequality Report 2022, which shows that the top 1% of the earners globally have captured twice as much of the economic growth since 1980 as the bottom 50%. So this is a wide uh, gap between the certain people who 1% of the uh, people have their earnings more than uh, uh, equivalent and more than of the people uh, uh, consisting of 50% of the global population. So the situation is not uh, good. We also find that the richest 1% of the world population owns 44% of the world's wealth, while the bottom 50% of the world's population owns just 1% of the world's wealth. 
This is the report from Credit Suisse Global Wealth Report 2021. In China, the income gap between the urban and the rural areas remains significant with the average income in urban areas more than double that of the rural areas. That is, uh, this is as per the World Bank 2022. In India also, uh, one of the rich, highest levels of income inequality in the world with the top 10% of the population owning more than 75% of the wealth. So what we find that uh, the globalization has uh, both the sides. Some people, some countries have benefited disproportionately as against many people who have been deprived because of the globalization. Now the anti-globalization uh, uh, movement is that the because of these uh, various kind of inequalities uh, amongst the nations and the people, some people uh, feel that yes, it is only for the rich people and against the poor people. So therefore, uh, they are saying that globalization is not good at all, and uh, uh, the there should be uh, you know restrictions. And therefore, now there is a slogan for. Uh, you know, protectionism and to bring in more and more nationalism. And uh, we have been seeing uh, such things happening around the world. Even in the advanced countries, people are now talking about uh, nationalism and protectionism. That is one way. Now, the second uh, way is like uh, for the uh, alternatives for the globalization. Now, they say that, yes, globalization can move, but there has to be some reforms in the process of globalization. What kind of reforms? Now, the reforms, they say that the uh, various kind of unfair activities which are taking place in the name of globalization, that those things must be stopped. Uh, so therefore, the rules of trade as propounded by the World Trade Organization, they must change. Now, World Trade Organization, though it says that it is for a fair trade, but what is happening is that Certain countries, they are giving, you know, uh, subsidies to their product products in such a manner that the basic theory of the international trade or the competitive cost advantage is, you know, uh, put to rest. Now, for example, if the United Nations give subsidy to their farmers, their produce, in such a manner that they can sell the product at a cheaper price in the international market, thereby depriving the other countries which are producing those things at comparatively lesser cost. Now, because the uh, countries like, for example, United uh, States of America or for the, uh, or, uh, the countries in the European Union, if they are getting the benefit of the subsidy and they are able to dump their products in the market, although there are provisions for anti-dumping and countervailing duties in the uh, WTO system, and there is a dispute settlement body, but that is not working effectively. So people say that, yes, globalization can continue, but there has to be some alternative, some reforms have to take place, not only in the WTO, also in the International Monetary Fund, where because of the uh, present uh, hegemony of United States over the US dollar through SWIFT, through which it can impose economic sanction, so any country which does not follow the uh, instructions and the uh, dictates of United States, they can impose, you know, various kinds of uh, unfair restrictions through economic sanctions. So uh, there is a talk that globalization, if it has to continue, it has to have certain kinds of reforms in the functioning of these institutions. And then uh, there is also, you know, as I said, anti-globalization wave. So that is, uh, you know, resulting into uh, uh, deglobalization. Now, in the past, we have seen a phase, uh, say, 1945 to until 2008, when United States was getting uh, all the benefits of the uh, globalization. But since 2008, we have been finding that because of some recession and some other uh, trouble happening in the United States, because of 
uh, you know, their own hegemony and th uh, through because of their own faulty uh, uh, financial policy, because uh, Fed Reserve is borrowing in such a manner that that itself is causing a lot of trouble in the United States. So now, uh, what they find because of the globalization and after China joining the WTO, now China has been able to you know export a uh, lot of commodities in the uh, world market. So uh, what is happening that United States domestic industry is unable to compete with the Chinese goods. So therefore, they feel no, they should not allow uh, the globalization in the same fashion as they used to allow prior to 2008. Now, the United States is feeling that many Chinese companies are going uh, uh, in the United States and they are uh, purchasing the, uh, uh, you know, the companies which are not doing so well in United States. And so therefore, United States is trying to uh, create restrictions for the foreign investment by the investment made from China and say from other countries. They are also trying to put restrictions on the goods being imported into United States. So there is a wave of deglobalization by the proponents of the globalization itself. Now, United States, which were talking about the open market economy, now they have been uh, you know, uh, restricting their earlier free trade agreement with NAFTA and the trans transatlantic uh, agreements. So uh, these are various perspectives which we are seeing now. So this perspective will definitely you know, bring in something new for the globalization to happen in the future. So what we find that uh, globalization has created uh, uh, you know, a, an imbalance in the uh, society and the adverse impact of the globalization are becoming visible. Say for example, deepening of the poverty and widening inequality. So similarly, there are uh, impact, adverse impact on the labor and unemployment. In certain countries, we find that because of the uh, problem of the uh, globalization, the countries are unable to uh, grow in the desired manner. So countries with a uh, lot of population, uh, they are you know, uh, unable to take advantage of the, uh, uh, their own resources, and it is creating more problem on, on unemployment. So there's a political impact also because globalization is also leading into uh, certain, uh, you know, problem uh, because of the uh, inequality, like social unrest and several other things. So what we find today, the result is that this globalization has uh, led to, uh, you know, it has created uh, two unequal world. Say for example, United States has uh, been uh, largely benefited. Some benefit, well, could be attributed to their local entrepreneurship, but then, uh, and, and for the technological development, but uh, then globalization is also a factor. So the countries which have taken the economic advantage of the globalization, they have been responsible for the, uh, uh, the, for the uh, global warming, whereas the countries uh, which are uh, having more population and have not been able to get so much of economic advantage, but uh, they are uh, suffering because of the uh, environmental problem. So many countries in the sub-Saharan Africa, Africa, Latin America, including India, uh, they are uh, feeling the burden of the global warming, whereas the countries which have taken the economic advantage, uh, now they are responsible for this global warming. So in the uh, issues on the globalization for the climate change, there has to be some uh, balancing, some compensation by the developed countries uh, for the damages which they have caused in the environment and for the uh, sufferings of the people uh, in the African countries or in the Asian countries. So thus we have seen that uh, globalization uh, has created a uh, lot of problems for certain countries and now the pinch of uh, some problems of the globalization are being felt 
not only in the developing country but also in the developed country so therefore now they want to you know uh, go for more protectionism and more uh, uh, towards their uh, nationalist policy and uh, we also see that uh, when brexit happened because why uh, the people in british uh, uh, in england they started feeling that with the free movement of the people there is problem of migration and uh, uh, so therefore they wanted to come out of the uh, uh, their um, um, commitment from the european union so brexit also happened because of the ill effect of the globalization <laughs> now let us see what is the third dimension uh, uh, of the globalization because of the development of various technology now we find that uh, globalization is getting more and more intensified because of the technological changes and one of the major technological changes in the is in the field of internet the information communication technology so basically today we are living in a borderless world whatever technological development takes place in one part of the world it that gets immediately uh, transferred to the other part of the world now the problem is there is a digital divide also because certain countries they have more access to the internet there are some other people who do not have so much of the internet access so that is also creating problem so although there is technological advantage but because of restrictions and because of the poor infrastructure in certain countries some so they are unable to get the benefit of the technological now uh, what are the various uh, um, technological ch changes which have happened and which is affecting the globalization that is artificial intelligence and machine learning robotic process automation is compute uh, computing quantum computing virtual reality and augmented reality blockchain technology internet of things 5g now some of these things are definitely helping the uh, globalization they are helping uh, the transactions to happen uh, quickly but at the same time it is creating problem for the uh, labor it is creating problem for the employment and uh, for uh, you see uh, the technologies uh, in certain countries they are you know creating a big gap between uh, the people who have access to the uh, internet and in certain countries where the people are not having access to the internet now because of the technological development people who have the internet access they are getting latest knowledge about what is happening around the world so so there is a difference uh, not only in the income and the wealth but also on the access to the information and because of that there is a big gap at the level of education and the skill of certain people so what is going to happen in the future so this gap uh, in the society also will continue to uh, widen because say people in the africa who do not have access to the internet and the people who are in united states or in certain other countries who have access to the internet so they will naturally have more advantage so their knowledge their uh, you know the skill that will keep on rising whereas the people who do not have access to the uh, internet and other things that will keep on uh, you know uh, 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 reducing so this uh, 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 technological gap the digital divide that is also going to you know effect now the another point which is happening because of the technological changes you know you know the, there is something called monopolization of the technology now number one in even in the wto it speaks about free transfer of technology but in certain areas where it should be done like in the uh, sector of health uh, for the public emergency and for uh, other pandemic like even the covid there also the issue was raised in the wto that access to the medicine at affordable prices should be through you know transfer of technology through transfer of uh, you know access to the raw material and uh, access to the medical devices but those things were refused by the developed countries so that issue is still pending in the wto but what i am trying to say is that the globalization uh, should help the uh, global community in a fair manner which is not happening so the rules of the globalization should also uh, uh, be in pace Uh, with the uh, 
point of view of the uh, benefit to the human being at large. So on the one hand, globalization is uh, creating more and more monopoly. Now, for example, uh, the, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, patents, so what we find, because of the patenting of the scientific inventions, the countries, like for example, in United States, uh, which is the uh, largest uh, economy in the world, there what we find, more than one third of its, globe, uh, its GDP comes only from the patent revenue. Now, United States GDP is $21 trillion. Now, one third means $7 trillion comes only from the revenue from the uh, patent royalty, technical fees, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, when we look at India, our entire GDP is only $3 trillion. So more than double of our entire uh, economy uh, for United States, that comes only from the uh, uh, revenue from the patent. Now, uh, the technology is good, but then the monopolization of the technology and the disproportionate uh, benefit out of the technology by increasing the prices of the product, whether for the pharma or for other technological product. If the other, the other side of the globe, if they are not uh, allowed access to the technology and access to the various product at the fair prices, I think the technology, though it is good, but because of the technological monopolization, the uh, people at large in various other part of the world, they are not getting the benefits. So what I think that globalization per se is good, but it must be regulated and the uh, activities around the world for movement of goods, services, capital, etc., should be at a fair, uh, 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 on the basis of the fair uh, treatment. It should not be unfair to certain countries at the cost of uh, benefit to the other countries.